you see growth from your team today? Uh, I did. I did. In, um, in what ways? Just, uh, you know, the mentality of next man up. Find out on uh, on Thursday that we're going to be down the big three. They're not going to be able to play. And in, uh, in 6 and 86, they're going to have to step up. And 26 was going to have to step up. And Billy was going to have to carry the load. And Paris was going to be down. Uh, so we knew we weren't going to be at full strength. Uh, but they didn't flinch. And and they came out with the mindset of of they decided that they were going to play to win. And in the first half, that's what you saw. Uh, and so you know that's that's a positive that you can show them what they're capable of. When you know you 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 just you just show up and quit worrying and just play free, right? Play for each other. So so definitely a glimpse there. And you know the resilience there at the end in the fourth quarter. Uh, but then also uh, we we see we see a growth opportunity. You know in the third quarter we talk about competitive stamina a lot. And, and football comes down to five, six, seven plays in the course of the game. And we didn't make those plays uh, in, the, in the third quarter. Uh, that put us in the position that we were uh, going into the fourth quarter, trying to come from behind uh, in a two-score game. Uh, Mike and Greg. Tony, you mentioned some of that, that fight in the fourth quarter. The, the last touchdown, Billy Kemp limps off with an injury, then makes the 14-yard yep. conversion on third down. Brennan. That didn't look like an easy physical touchdown to score head first through. What does that say about those guys that, that they have that in them? Right. I think you've seen that all year long that, that these young men got some pride to them. Um, they, they, they're competitive. Uh, they want to they want win. Um, but I've also said, you know, you got to learn how to win. And I think today, you know, the, the guys learned or got closer to learning how, how to win. But uh, there's no quit, no fight. Got to play four quarters. Uh, doesn't matter. Again, going back to uh, the growth mindset, we talked a lot about that. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You know, it's all about the next play and an opportunity uh, to do better. So really proud of those guys, uh, the way that they fought. But, man, this, this one hurts a lot uh, because they were so close. Um, and, and just got to encourage the guys to continue to persevere through the adversity because the, uh, the, uh, the joy is on the other side. Along the same lines, those last few plays defensively, yeah. you looked very frustrated with the penalties. John said he, he coaches them to Correct. finish. So where's the balance? Just got to be smart. You know, got to be smart. Don't want any personal fouls. Don't want, money, want anybody ejected from the game, you know, in that situation. Um, we're trying to, to see if we can force them to make a mistake. Uh, but at the same time, too, you got you to be smart right there. And, and one thing we talk about is, is winning and losing with class. And, you know, they're at the end of the game. Uh, I want Because then it spoils over and you see the guys are getting in each other's face after the game. We don't have any time for that. You know, when we win, we want to be humble. And, when we, and we want to be humble in defeat as well. Are the issues to the three receivers long term? Is it does no. it vary? Uh, I think I think Wicks is probably the longer longer term of all of them uh, with the uh, with the bone bruise that he has uh, coming off of that. But it's not. There's nothing that's we, we believe is going to be too long term. It's more going to be a pain tolerance as he can come back. Uh, KT was a decision that uh, trying to do you know what's best for him and the football team, and and we felt like you know not risking it this week and being able to give him a little bit of time to um to recover. Uh, but we expect him to be back in practice next week, ready to go. And then Lavelle will be a, a day-to-day situation. Uh, Sackett Wood had had career high receptions today. What kind of he brings to the offense? Is it something that you guys seen at practice throughout the season? You know, both both the tight ends and that position right there. If you if you know you know philosophically, uh, eleven personnel, um, offensive philosophy. Those guys, man, they're they're critical. They're just as important as the quarterback, and really, they they're the glue that holds everything together. Uh, and when those guys can uh, can be effective in the passing game and give you that extra hat in the run game, uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility so that you don't have to do a ton of uh, uh, personnel. Uh, changes, but today we wanted to do some more personnel changes because we knew we were down uh, the big three, and we wanted to see if they could adjust uh, and kind of keep them off balance. But uh, to see you know Sackett you know come on and catch the ball and, and and be consistent and 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 look to run the score afterward, you know that's what that's what I uh, like to see today. You know sometimes those guys want to catch the ball and like oh I caught it and I run with it. They want to fall down or or look to go down or expect to get hit. But I thought today you know he was playing with that competitive toughness that we all know that uh, that he had. And, and and he came up big for us. He had some uh, he had some big plays uh, in the course of the game, and we needed him to you know considering uh, the situation with the depth today. A couple of those timeouts in the second half yeah. on punts. Is that something you wish you had back, especially the onside kick? Yeah, always having not to go wish. Poorly? You have to have those back. I mean, if you're going to have a chance to win there at the end of the game. Uh, and I was really frustrated with that. 
uh, because that was that was just you know a lack of communication, and uh, I got to do a better job with the staff because we got we got tons of of checks and balances to make sure that that we got everybody that we need, and you know Cohen got Cohen got subbed out, and uh, Cohen was playing multiple spots, and so there was a miscommunication. But uh, we need to have more awareness on the sideline, uh, and Cohen's got to have some more awareness too to be able to communicate. You know that he was subbed out to whoever his backup was, or if you're you're subbing out at another position, we just got to do a better job there. And but those were costs. Because if you have those two timeouts with three and some change on the game, you don't have to onside kick. You kick it deep, and then you have a chance to see if you can force a stop um, and then make them drive the field or in the game. Uh, but when you have to go with an onside kick, the percentages of getting an onside kick are definitely not in your favor. Uh, but if you have two timeouts, it's a different decision. Uh, Jeff and Mike. You knew Carolina had a prolific offense, but did you think Downs would be as big a problem as he turned out to be? I did. Today? I mean, Downs is, Downs is as electric a young man as there is. I'm very familiar with his family. You know, his father is a college coach. Uh, he's got a younger brother that's a pretty good football player. Um, no, but I, I knew. And, and to be honest, I was a little surprised that they didn't use him down the field uh, more than, uh, than, than what I saw on film. Uh, but he's, he's dynamic. And, and, and the thought process there is, you know, when you, when you start talking about spread no huddle offenses, you want to stretch, you want to stretch horizontally, horizontally and vertically. So when they got them big boys on the outside that can stretch it vertically and you got downs, right, he's a problem for anybody. Uh, so then now you got to try and play different, different coverages and roll coverages. And then now that makes you susceptible to being light in the box on the run. Uh, so, so I thought that there would just in general you'd use him more down the field. But man, they're getting a ton of production out of him, and uh, he caught some balls. And 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 luckily we were able to get him on the ground. I was worried that if you get him in space, uh, he's hard. He's hard to tackle. But a ton of respect for uh, for Downs. And and I tell you what, the chemistry that you see between May and Downs, I mean, it's it's special. You know, it's 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 special for for a young quarterback to be on that same page. And you just watch if you just watch the game within the game, you see the communication, the hand signals, the eye contact, you know, all those things that they're doing that, you know, that they have a really, really good chemistry. And I think that gives that quarterback, you know, the confidence to be able to sit in the pocket, extend the play because he knows he's got a safety valve sitting out there in the flats that if you get it to him, he breaks one tackle. It's a touchdown. You mentioned some of the guys had to step up and play yeah. that normally have smaller roles. Was it easier to get like full buy-in on, on your offensive approach because it was those guys? You know what I mean? It's, it's not guys who've had success at that. A bunch of guys who are just going to do what you told them and, and execute what you asked. No, I, I don't know if, if that's necessarily the case. I, I think what you saw, though, is is – you know, one of the biggest challenges in football, and you've heard me say about building competitive depth, right? When a guy knows he's second string behind a really, really good player, does he come to practice every single day, right, trying to prepare like the starter? Probably not, you know, because just naturally they're young people and they got so many influences. It's like, okay, I'm going to be ready, but I don't prepare like the starter. Right. That's that's one of the challenges with backup quarterback. Everybody likes the backup quarterback till they get in there. Right. Because when you're the starter, you prepare a different way. And so I, I think what you saw is you saw a different level of 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 energy, excitement. Right. And appreciation for those young guys that were getting a chance to start. And now the challenge is going to be can the older guys. Right. Say, OK they now elevated the level of play. You know, if they're going to do that in my absence, then you know what, when I come back, I got to be ready to go. And that's something we've been, you know, trying to build. Uh, and, but you need opportunities um, and the opportunity to present itself. And, and now hopefully that'll just drive that competitive uh, uh, nature in that room so that everybody understands that we need everybody to be ready as if they're the starter. Because again, you never know when you're going to be called upon five, six plays in a game that are going to make the difference. We're going to take our last two questions from Greg and Preston. The red zone stuff today was was good for you guys on offense. I think yeah. you were perfect in, in red zone opportunities for scoring touchdowns. What was the difference, and how much did the O line, I guess, have to do? Yeah, I, I think what you saw is, is as I said, um, you saw all three, you know, major groups. You know, the quarterback, the skill guys, and the guys up front. And if you watch in, the, in, in particular in the first half, man, they were creating running lanes. The backs were running hard, man. And when those guys can have success in the run game, you should see them when they come to the sideline, man. Noah Josie about took my arm off three times because they're so excited, they're so engaged in the game, and just what you saw is is that chemistry, you know, working together 
together. And that's really what the difference is. And if, and if you watch, especially the first drive, man, it, it, it wasn't anything spectacular other than making the play required. You hit a hitch here, you run the ball, you stay ahead of the chains. Now you can be more aggressive on offense, but you're, you're dictating the pace because you're not playing behind the chains. So when you can hand the ball off and get four, it's a much easier call, you know, on second and six than it is second and nine. And then if you can run the ball, now you're not having to throw it every single down and you're not in your first and long, second and long, third and long situation. So uh, I think it was just the guys excited to play, believing, you know, um, and, and that's a challenge because the last two weeks, you know, I've noticed there's a different level of energy, you know, and, and, and that's my job as the, as the head coach to get these guys to understand it's not a logo. You know, you can't play to a logo. You know, everybody's going to be excited to play in a rivalry game. You know, it's Miami, it's the U, right? But we got to have that kind of focus, that kind of preparation, that kind of intensity every single week. Or what's going to happen is you're going to practice bad habits. And, and, and I challenge the team because on Wednesday, late in practice, I saw a little bit of a fixed mindset, you know, come in and I got after the team. And now, you know, there's evidence like, okay, this is why we got we to gotta stamp out any complacency, right? And we got to continue to focus on that competitive stamina because when we have a fixed mindset, that we're giving away five, six, seven plays, and, and right now we're not good enough to overcome uh, giving away those plays. Preston with the last question. Yeah, you and Kitch have both talked about that competitive stamina. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, and how do you improve that? Compete no matter what the situation is, right? So when you talk about competitive stamina, it's always about the next play being my best play. Right. And so if I have a bad play, all right, good. It's a learning opportunity. It's the next play. If I have a good play, right, good. Stay humble. It's the next play. Doesn't matter what's on the scoreboard. Doesn't matter who you're, uh, what the conditions are around you. You just compete. Right, and you compete to the best of your ability, and you're slowly, slowly starting to see, you know, that 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 really take root, you know, within the within the program, and um, that's why it hurts because I want those guys to taste some success, right? Because success breeds, you know, more buy-in, more belief, uh, but also too, I understand as I told the guys in the locker room, man, adversity is necessary. It's building of the character, and we're focusing on trying to establish the core values and not just words, but becoming values in each and every individual in the organization. And uh, we got uh, plenty of good to look at, to stay humble with, and then plenty of opportunity of growth uh, going forward.